Hey neighbor, we're going to show you how to install a small drip irrigation system in your backyard vegetable garden. So we've been proponents of drip irrigation for a long time. I think it's a great way to irrigate your garden. We've had larger drip irrigation systems on the market for a number of years now, but we just come out with this small drip irrigation kit for you guys out there that don't need all that for a big garden, but you want drip irrigation for a small garden. And I think this is the best system on the market. And after we get it installed, I'll explain to you why. All right, so let's get into it. The box it comes in is about 17 by 17 by nine there. Let's cut into it. All right, we're gonna lay out everything that comes in the drip irrigation kit. We have 30 feet of mainline tubing. We have our filter regulator combo, which is already assembled. And what you have on here is you have your pressure regulator, you have your filter, and then you have your hookup to your main line. And this right here is what hooks up to your water hose. Now make sure that there is a washer inside of this right here. That way it won't leak. You gotta have a water hose washer inside the area there that hooks up to the water hose. And then we've got 200 feet, 100 foot per roll of this drip tubing and it has the emitters built already into it. Then we have our hole punch, we have our transfer barbs, we have our figure eight to cut off the end of our, or to plug off the end of our mainline tubing. And we have our goof plugs that's gonna plug off the end of our drip tubing. Let's lay it all out. All right, so we got our tubing. There's our figure eight that goes on the end of the main line here. Hole punch. Now this right here is what we call a transfer barb. It looks real similar to the goof plug. The exception is that hole there goes all the way through. So we use this to attach the drip tubing to the main line. The goof plug, however, does not go all the way through and we use this to plug up the end of the drip tubing. Also included in this kit is some stakes. We have two different kinds of stakes. We have these larger stakes here, which are used to pin down the mainline tubing so it didn't move around on you. And then we have the drip tubing stakes, which are smaller, that will pin down the drip tubing. Also inside of each irrigation kit, you have a little instruction sheet in there. It shows you everything that you get with the irrigation kit and a little sample layout of a garden on the back side there. All right, so the size garden I'm working with today is 30 foot in length and it is in 25 foot in width. Now this is a perfect size garden for this irrigation kit. Now yesterday afternoon, I got out here and planted my potatoes. So I've already got my potatoes in the ground, but the other part of the garden hadn't been planted yet. So if I'm doing anything that I've got to disturb the soil a lot to put into the ground, like potatoes, I normally like to plant them first before I put this irrigation system on top. But if I'm doing transplants or if I'm you know, just planting seeds, we want to put that irrigation system out before we plant. However, if you do go ahead and plant, you can easily put this irrigation system out after you plant. I just find it more beneficial to be able to put my irrigation system in first and then plant on top of it with the exception of things that you got to dig a trench and plant such as potatoes. Now, the only additional items I need to put the irrigation system is a couple of tools, a tape measure, a knife, a good pocket knife, or pliers, these Klein pliers I keep in my garden shed. I like to use these to cut my tape and my tubing. However, you can use a good pocket knife and some type of marker. All right, so we've got 30 feet of mainline tubing. We're going to use all this because our bed is 25 foot long, but we're going to use the majority of it. We're going to cut that tape off from there. And this is where the stakes come in handy. We're going to go ahead and lay this out and stake it down. So I'm going to stake this down. Now it's kind of an overcast day today, but the sun comes out and gets this tubing warmed up, it'll straighten out a lot better than it will on an overcast day. But these pins kind of help it get straightened out for you. 
Now I'm gonna put me probably about four, maybe five of these in there to keep it pinned down. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and trim off my excess mainline tubing. Now you wanna cut this probably somewhere about two foot past your last row. All right, I'm gonna install my filter regulator combo. This little nut here on the end needs to be screwed all the way backwards. And I'll slide the tubing on there, then I will tighten this down to secure it in place. Now we got that secured, attached in place. Now I'm gonna lay off my rows and I'm gonna measure it off and I'm gonna take my little marker there and mark where every one of my transfer barbs will need to be punched in to my mainline tubing. So I've already got two rows of potatoes planted and I planted these on three foot apart. So I'm just gonna mark right there where that transfer barb will go into the tubing. And once I get past the potatoes, I'm gonna change my row spacing up to four foot. Four foot's pretty good, gives me room to walk in there because I'm going, probably gonna plant things like squash and cucumbers down here, so I need a little more room. So I would just simply measure off from my last row right there to four foot. And mark it. And just repeat that all the way down to the end of the bed. So I'm going to have five rows, 30 foot long. That's a total of 150 feet. I got 200 feet of drip tubing, so I got plenty to accommodate this small garden here. I'll end up having about 50 foot of the drip tubing left over. All right, it's time to punch the holes in the mainline tubing for the transfer barb. Now you want to go in at an angle so that this barb comes out and doesn't kink your tubing. So you want to come out at an angle there that's going to be parallel with your row right there. Just going to take that uh, little tool right there, put it where I want it, and twist and push. Now you hear a little pop when it goes in. At that point, I take my transfer barb and just put it in there. You hear another pop. That's what the finished product looks like right there. All right, this is where it comes in handy to mark that tube in there. I know exactly, even though I don't have my row planted yet, I know exactly where I want this drip irrigation at. So I punch it right there. Boom, pop it in. Okay, so this tubing has the emitters built in and they're six inches apart. You can see it right there. It's a swelled part of the tubing. Now, when I'm attaching this tubing to a transfer barb or at the end of the row where I'm putting the goof plug in to plug up the end, I wanna make sure that I don't end up or start on an emitter. So you never wanna cut on an emitter you want to cut and put your fittings in between the emitters where the uh, tubing is right there without an emitter there so it fits nicely. All right, time to install our drip tubing. Take that bar bear, we're just going to push it up on there, wiggle just a little bit, and there it's on there nice and snug. Then we're going to roll out our tubing on top of where we planted our potatoes. Got our tubing rolled out. Now it's time to take these nice little stakes and pin it down where it won't move around on us and stay in place there. Gonna put several down through there and there on the end. We're gonna do the exact same thing. Attach our tubing, lay it out, pin it down on all the existing rows.
Now we got our drip tubing run. It's time to hook the water up to the field regular combo again. Make sure that that washer's still in place there. It keeps it from leaking. Now, if you notice, we've not plugged anything up yet. And the reason for that is we're going to hook the water hose up and then we're going to flush the system out. And then we're going to put the plugs on the end of the mainline tubing, the figure eight, and the plugs on the end of the drip tubing after we flush any dirt that may have possibly got in there out. All right, I flushed out the mainline tubing, so now I want to put my figure eight on there. Slide it on light right there. Bend it over, stick it up, and that stops any water from coming out there. Now I'm going to turn my system back on again to flush out the uh, drip line tubing before I put the goof plugs on the end of those. Now this is the goof plugs and the end you want to use on this tubing that we have here is the smaller end. The bigger end is meant for a different size tubing so we want to use this one right here to plug off or to stop off the end of the tubing so no water can come out there. All right, so we made sure we're not on the admitter, the swelled part there. We're going to take this goof plug and just stick it in there, wiggle just a little bit. You can see it's nicely installed. So we've got our system in, got it all flushed out and plugged up and it's working nicely. Now the emitters are ever six inches apart on the drip tubing. And each emitter puts out 0.5 gallons per hour. So that means every foot we're putting out a gallon per hour. We've got 150 foot of tubing running this little small garden here. So that means we're putting out 150 gallons per hour. Now we could run more than that off our water system most household water systems will give you anywhere between four and five gallons per minute. And that's plenty of water to run a system like this right here. And with these emitters, like they are over six inches and putting out a good amount of water, you don't have to run this for a very long time to get your crops watered in well. So we have these little cutoff valves that's not included in the kit, but you can buy them on our website extra. We have them in packs of tens. So let's just take for granted that you wanted to cut a line off and you didn't want to water on this line and you wanted water on the rest of them. You could purchase these right here and these have the barbed fittings on them and they would fit right in there and they would replace the transfer barb and you could put cutoff valves on each line or on some of the lines. All right, so this new product for this, this drip tubing is something I really like. It puts out a lot of water. It's easy to work with and it'll last for a long period of time. The only drawback to it and the reason we put this in our raised bed kit and our small irrigation kit is because you cannot run any line longer than 30 foot. 30 foot is your maximum amount of line you can run there. Now you can run several of them off your main line tubing, but 30 feet is gonna be your limit there. And that's the reason we use this for small irrigation systems. If your rows are longer than 30 feet, then you wanna step up and use our drip irrigation tape. All right, so I told you I was gonna tell you why I thought this was the best small irrigation system on the market. The reason is because it's easy to install. We've made it easy for you. We've went ahead and put that filter regulator combo together for you. We got everything laid out so it's simple and easy to put in. I feel like just about anybody could install this system right here. It's well made and each component that you've seen me use today is available individually off our website. If your dog gets in there and chews a pack of something up, don't sweat it. You can go directly on our website and buy that individual item. We support these products well and I think it's a perfect system to use in your small backyard vegetable garden.